Okay, good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Can the people at the back hear me well? Good. Wonderful. Thank you for coming to this class. This is ECE 302. I'm Stanley Chan. I'm the instructor for this course for this semester. So it is my pleasure to welcome you to this very interesting course. ECE 302 is known to be one of the most difficult courses in our department. Uh, but on the other hand, I can tell you that this is also one of the most important courses in your career. Now, why do I say that? It's because no matter what career path you take, one thing that you cannot avoid is uncertainty. You're going to see randomness everywhere. If you want to design circuits, you're going to see some randomness in your resistors. If you want to do machine learning, of course, randomness is everywhere. You want to design a classifier. You say, no, I want to just go to a restaurant. I want to open up my own restaurant uh, after getting your ECE degree. It's also OK, but how many customers are coming today versus tomorrow? How do you make the forecast? It's all randomness. Right? Um, so probabilistic methods is just everywhere. So I hope uh, in this course, we can learn some very useful techniques. Uh, how do we formulate a problem? How do we analyze the problem? And how do we tackle those problems? OK? Uh, it is a very difficult course because uh, it's just that it's abstract. Uh, we are not used to handle randomness in our lives. Everything in our lives so far has been a linear, straight line, deterministic process. I study hard, I will get an A. Okay? I don't study, I will get an F. Okay? So it's a very, very linear process. But as you will see in 302, many things are random. Uh, how do we end, analyze those random events? That's a piece of art that will also require a lot of thinking. And there's no free lunch here. There's no fast food here that we really need to just sit down and think through all these processes one by one. OK, so this is the first lecture. What I want to do is to divide this lecture into two halves. The first half, I'm going to tell you something about my perspective of this course. And then I'm going to ask our TA to be here to tell you the course logistics. Now, I understand that many of you are worrying about, ah, how, much percent, how many percent uh, of, the, uh, of your course grade will go to uh, homework, uh, what is exam, midterms, finals, et cetera, et cetera. So our TA will be here to tell you all these details that you want to know, OK? But before I do that, I want to start by telling you some perspective, OK? Some perspective about this course then I hope that that could be a um, pretty good motivation for you to um, really engage in this course and also calibrate some of these misconceptions about taking this class. Okay? I know you have taken many, many courses, and you are great, great, great students because you have marched all the way to this point to take 302. Right? So you have, you have a lot of experience. And I want to calibrate your expectation for this course. What do you expect from me, and what do I expect from you? So with that, I will go to my slide with this title here. Let me see, how do I full screen? OK. 10 mistakes when learning probability. <laughs> OK, why 10? Well. I guess you have taken enough courses and you have seen enough professors. 10 is actually a pretty good number. Not too long, not too short. Okay? And you can probably agree with me that a lot of professors, they just cannot teach. Okay? <laughs> and so if a professor sucks in teaching and he makes his PowerPoint slides long, that's going to be pretty torture to everyone. So I promise to make it short, because if I suck, 
but I'm short, and I tell you that only 10 points, you know when I will stop, <laughs> okay? But if I'm bad, but I am, okay, but if I am, if I give a great lecture, okay, um, then you wouldn't mind listening to me for a longer time, right? However, in my bed, if I keep saying for one hour, you don't want to listen to me anymore, okay? So my promise today is to keep it short and precise and answer these questions. What are the 10 mistakes when learning probability? Okay, number one, this is just another math class to check my prerequisites. That's 302, ah, right? Okay, um, because this is in our curriculum, um, and this is a mandatory course, everyone has to take it. I have no choice. I don't want to take it. I don't know why 302 is going to be useful. Uh, I'm forced to be here in this classroom to learn this crap. Now, there are two possibilities that you can come up with this reasoning. Number one, you actually really understand what 302 is all about. You have marched through from the chapter one to chapter 10 of the textbook, and no matter which page I flip it, you can explain to me the concept behind that page, okay? If you're at that stage, you can probably make that statement. It's just something to check my prerequisite is useless because I have learned everything, and I can, I can confess that none of those are useful in my career. If you can say that, great, okay? But if you cannot say that, then that would be the second possibility, which is that actually I listened to someone's friends, someone's friends and someone's friends, okay? And they tell me that 302 is boring. And I went to internet, I, tra I check uh, Reddit, I check Quora, I check raymyprofessor.com, and I find all this information from the internet. I figured out that it's not going to be an interesting and fun class. Therefore, it's just another math class to check my prerequisite. All right, so if you're that, then you probably do not have the full information to make that claim, all right? Why don't you give me an opportunity to tell you what is going on in 302 why don't we spend a semester in 302 and learn the material and see after one semester, would you say something different? How about that? Okay? Okay. Probability is the math of gambling. Okay? Um, that's a pretty interesting statement that I hear from students from time to time because in 2008, there was a pretty famous movie called 21 that featured a, a, the black jack team of MIT where the students, they learned the probability and how to count the cards, count the points, and then they went to Las Vegas and won a lot of money, okay? So is probability about flipping the coin, tossing the die, and doing the 21 point? Yeah, you can use that, but probability is a lot bigger than that. Um, you go to any big firms, uh, places that you want to go to. Amazon, Google, Facebook, where else? You can tell me, okay? The big name companies. You interview for the data scientist position, uh, pretty good pay nowadays. Uh, what will they ask you? Besides programming, they're going to ask you, hey, this is data set. Tell me what you see from this data set. What do you do? Well, you do regression. And then what do you do? You measure the confidence. You say that whether there's statistical significance, right? You do all these kind of things. What are they? Their probability, okay? It's not just about gambling. Now, if you're good at gambling, teach me, okay? I would be very happy to learn that, okay? Okay, so, so if we can have, if I teach you the probability, you can teach me how to uh, win some money in Las Vegas. Let's do this win-win game, okay? Okay, so, to get a job in machine learning, I just need PyTorch. Does anyone know what is PyTorch? Oh, no one knows what is PyTorch. You guys know what is PyTorch, so you're ready to go to Google, okay? Uh, PyTorch is a very uh, popular programming uh, language, of course, under Python, uh, that uh, helps you to program deep learning algorithms. 
Okay? And um, if you go to interview nowadays, uh, of course, they will ask you to uh, program something, um, uh, sometimes in C++, sometimes in Python, but then once you sit down and actually do the work, it will be PyTorch. You actually do the prototyping of the, uh, the, the, the code. Okay, so there are misconceptions here. I want to be a machine learning scientist. Therefore, I need to sharpen my tools, skills in, in software. I need to learn a lot of programming skills and ignore the math, okay? So I can promise you what will happen. You can be the excellent programmer. You can go to those companies as an entry level, level three, okay? With a bachelor degree, level three, okay? Um, you work hard, you can go to level four. With good luck, get to level five. But how to go to level five and level six? Now, level six is close to a manager, all right? So how to get to there? Well, then you need, to, you, need to, you need to coach a team, right? You need to analyze the problem. You need to formulate the problem. How are you going to formulate the problem without knowing the math? All the people hide up in the hierarchy, they are good because they know how to understand the problem. It's not that they're going to sit down and code. If you just want to code, there are plenty of other schools that can train you to be an excellent programmer. You don't have to be here to learn the equation. We're teaching you the equation because we think that by empowering you with all these equations and all these concepts, you can do a lot more than a programmer. And that's our goal here. Okay? All right, next one. Every problem has a recipe. How many have you have taken 301? Ah, oh, okay. Is 301 fun? Not fun. But is it easy? Not easy, I understand. But let me ask you, what kind of concepts are there in 301? Convolution, how about that? Okay, what is convolution? Uh, integral and then uh, things like that here and there. A lot of problems, it's very easy. You flip, you shift, and you add. Three words, flip, shift, and add. That's convolution, okay? Now, whatever problem you encounter in convolution is flip, shift, and add. That's all, okay? Now, it's a matter of whether you get the fluency or not in convolution, okay? It's all about the same problem. What else do you learn from 301? Uh, Fourier transform. What is Fourier transform? Look up a table, get the formula, write it down. Okay, that's Fourier transform. How difficult can that be? Mm, a lot of practice, of course, um, right? So there are lots of concepts behind Fourier transform. But as far as this practicing goes, you just remember the formula, remember the trick, follow the recipe, you look for the recipe, and then you can get a good grade. The same tactic doesn't work for 302, unfortunately. There isn't a recipe like Fourier transform. There's a table that you can just follow the steps. 302 is all about thinking. That is why it makes it so hard. The learning curve is very plateau in the beginning, and then suddenly you will have a jump, and then you reach there. Okay, it's not a linear curve that you spend more time and then gradually can pick up. It's really about suffer, suffer, suffer. You don't get it until a point, ding, you get it. Okay, now, how can you make this ding moment to appear earlier? Uh, unfortunately, the truth is that you gotta suffer earlier. The longer you suffer, the longer you can pass through that dark period. Okay, so, there's no recipe in this course. Um, every problem is new. Every problem requires you to think. If you want to do well in this course, you better spend the time understanding the concept rather than trying to look for patterns. There's no patterns in this course. Okay, next one. You didn't teach me problem number three in the lecture and you test me in the exam. Okay. That's very common, and let me give you uh, this kind of perspective. Imagine one day, okay, you go to a company, X, okay, 
And one day, you had Chipotle, okay? And that Chipotle is not very clean that day, okay? So you get the food, and you're not feeling very well. You go to the toilet, and then you did something, okay? As you walk out, you did a flush, okay? And then the smell goes out to the entire office. Then your boss came, what happens? Why don't you just flush? Then you tell your boss, hey boss, you didn't teach me to flush the toilet in the employee handbook. Okay, so, so it's the same principle here, ladies and gentlemen. In this course, you're gonna see a lot of, a lot of problems, and I promise that the exam problems will be different from the homework problem, okay? And please do not complain that I haven't seen homework number 3A in the homework in the lecture, okay? It's just so different. It's mean to be different. I design it to be different. I on purposely make it different, although I can ensure that all the problems are within your reach, okay? It won't, it won't be something that comes up with an IQ test. It wouldn't be like that. It got to be something that you can apply all the techniques that you have learned in the class, all the techniques that you learned from the homework, you will be able to do the test, okay? That's for sure. Number six, I can learn it in one week before the exam because I have VIP, I have uh, electromagnetics, I, I need to interview companies XYZ, ABC, uh, I have uh, uh, another 10 different courses to take. Uh, so because you put the videos online, I think I can learn it in one week before the exam, okay? Now, that could be different variations of this mortality, okay, you know what I mean. Um, so what should I comment? Two words. Good luck. Okay. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's watch the videos later. Um, so in this way, now let, me, let me see how I can comment on that. I have been teaching this course, uh, this is going to be the, my ninth year uh, teaching this class. Um, I have uh, seen hundreds, if not a thousand students uh, who have taken this course. Um, there has not been any success case. Uh, auditing the class, watching the video, and get an A. Zero. Now, why? Um, the honest answer is that you and I are both human beings, okay? Uh, you cannot set up a schedule, um, watch video at 7 p.m every night. You're not going to do that, okay? That's why you need a classroom that a bad professor will be standing here disseminating the boring language and knowledge to you. You're forced to be in this classroom and listen to the boring lecture. That's the reason, because there is setting up an environment for you to sit there and listen. We're human beings. We just do not have the discipline. I tried, okay? I tried to take a course from Coursera before, and after two weeks, I gave up. Why? Because I have the real homework to do, I have the real exams to take, and I have the real lectures to attend that is taking all my energy already. So if you don't come to class, and you think that you can catch up all the classes through videos, that's going to be a big mistake. You're not gonna do that, okay? Occasionally, if you miss one or two classes, of course, uh, you can catch up. But if it is a consistent pattern of not coming to class, I promise that you wouldn't do well, just by statistics. I've seen enough failures that I just want to tell you that please do not be the next sample. Okay. All right, next one. If I spent 60 hours a week, I will get an A. Uh, number one, you will not be spending 60 hours 
per week on this course because you have another 10 different courses and projects and job interviews uh, to spend your time on, okay? You're not gonna spend 60 hours per week, but even if you spend 60 hours per week, there's no guarantee that you will get an A. Why? Well, because this course is about thinking. You sit down in the library, you listen to your iPod, and then you open up YouTube, and then you have CNN News sitting on next, and your TikTok sitting there, and, and you say, okay, I'm gonna put this textbook here. I'm gonna put it there for 60 hours a week. I'm studying, okay? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is not studying. Okay, you know what I mean, right? You have gone through this process. That's not studying. Even if you say, okay, I'm gonna shut down all my computers, all my uh, cell phones, uh, I'm gonna lock myself in, in the library corner. I just, I'm just stare at a book 60 hours a week. That's not guaranteed that you can get an A. Why? Because this course requires you to sit down and work and think, okay? You only read the book, you read it a couple times, you read it a thousand times, but without really understanding what's going on in the book, you're not gonna get an A, okay? This course requires you to think, okay? Probabilistic thinking is about randomness. How do you embrace a randomness? How do you formulate a problem? If you don't sit down and work on a problem, if you don't sit down and understand the concepts, there's no way for you to understand. If you can understand, you can get it done in a couple hours. If you don't understand, even if you spend 60 hours, that's not gonna work. That's why we have a lot of resources in this class, okay? You have lecture here, we have TAs, okay? We have undergraduate TAs to help grade and homework. We have Piazza. We have forums, right? We have, we have recitals. We have weekly recitals. Uh, Ken is gonna tell you how it's gonna work. Uh, you can go to our office hours. If you want, we can set up Zoom meetings with you. Right? There are plenty of resources. There are plenty of problems. We have written problems. We have proofs. We have programming problems. Python programming problems. Okay, if you want to use MATLAB, you're also welcome to use MATLAB, but it's time to learn Python. Um, uh, we have plenty of resources, right? We have videos, we have textbooks. We have a lot of things for you, okay? So make good use of these resources to help you learn. And don't just look at the book and then uh, spend the 60 hours not learning things, okay? Make good use of our resources and really understand the concepts. Do not ask me the word prompt. That's just very common in the math class, okay? Oh, you test me triple integral. Just, just, just tell me the triple integral, okay? So this is the triple integral equals what, okay? Don't ask me to formulate a problem, okay? Don't say, oh, one day Alex went to the swimming pool. He can swim um, uh, how many, uh, how many uh, uh, miles per hour? And then, and then this lady came and then she can swim how fast? Oh, so on average, and then what is the probability? Don't ask me that, okay? Tell me the base rule. Tell me to write down the base theorem, and then tell me what is the probability. I will just write down the probability, follow the recipe, okay? Um, uh, uh, unfortunately, in this class, you're gonna see a lot of word problems, okay? There are lots of stories, <laughs> a lot of stories of a person A and C and another person B and then they have some conversation and then they will have a discussion and there will be some issues that you want to analyze, okay? You say, I hate that. Okay, another scenario, think about that. One day, uh, which company did I say? XYZ, right? So this time you go to ABC. Company ABC, your boss gives you a task. Hey, Kent, let's, let, let's, let's work on this problem, okay? Um, uh, uh, we have a big client, uh, and they are demanding on a solution for this camera, okay? And uh, they want to take images in this condition, and, and, but then our products today cannot fix that. Uh, can, you, can you look into the problem and then, and then, and then give me some uh, uh, proposed ideas, and then let's, let's implement that. And one day, came, Ken came back. After, we, after one week, okay, Ken, sorry, I'm using you, okay? So you know, Ken came and said, hey, why don't you just formulate the problem for me and, and ask me to program this thing 
and I will just execute it for you. And your boss will say, but I asked you to formulate a problem. This is what the client wants. This is what our product is not good at. You go and figure out the problem. And you say, this is, don't give me a word problem. <laughs> All right, you see what happens? Okay. Uh, this, is, this is the way of thinking. Right? As you go out and work, nobody is going to tell you that this is the equation and solve this equation and give me the number. If, if it's that simple, they don't need to hire you. They just need a very powerful deep neural network that can solve all these problems, okay? Including solving partial differential equations nowadays. Deep neural networks can do that. Why do they need you? Because they need you to formulate a problem. They want you to look at the actual scenario. Oh, this pipe is leaking. Okay, let's, let's come up with different reasons and let's fix that. You've got to analyze the problem, okay? This is the word problem. That's a realistic problem that you're going to embrace, okay? So you've got to say, Hey, please ask me word problem because I'm prepared. Okay, all right. Number ten, feathers instead of wings. Okay, this is a little bit deeper um, in terms of the um, uh, thinking. A lot of times, in your age, you want to focus on the details. That I totally understand. Okay, a lot of details. Professor, you make a mistake in this equation of this homework. Uh, that, that's totally fine. Okay, I appreciate that. But I would ask you not to just look for these tiny little things and forget that I'm actually teaching you the meaning of expectation of two random variables. Okay? If you, if you put too much energy into the tiny details of each individual step, why is it a plus but not a minus? Because I, 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 I have a typo, okay? Uh, uh, but you forget that there's a bigger goal here. Then you're really not learning the concept. There's something important. There's something more fine-grained. Now, I'm not saying which one is more important, right? But you, you need both. But in terms of learning the, the priority, you should always try to get the, the big thing first, okay? Feather and wings, what are they? They are both important for the bird to fly, okay? But which one is more critical? Can the bird just have feather without wings? Uh, or can the bird with a wing with less feather? Which one can fly, okay? You should think about it from that way. Things, there's something that's more important. There's something that are high-level pictures. There's something that is going to change the concept of thinking that you should grab them first, okay? The tiny details, the tactics, they are less important, okay? There's a difference between strategy and tactic, okay? If you have a strategy without tactic, you can just go to your destination slower, but you will eventually get there because you have a strategy. If you only have tactics, but if you don't have strategy, you will never get anywhere. That's the difference between the two, okay? So I hope this class will change this mindset that let's focus on the big picture, big concepts, and big thinking uh, in order to help us succeed in this course, all right? So these are the 10 bullet points that I want to share. I hope you really understand that as we are marching through the semester on 302, let's pay attention to these bullet points. Let's don't make these mistakes as we are learning 302. All right? Okay. Wonderful. Any questions so far? Good. Okay. If not, then let's uh, switch the role. And uh, let me ask Ken to be here to tell you how we're going to run this class.
Thank you. Uh, cool. Hello. My name is Kent. I'm a graduate student here at Purdue, and I'm going to be the graduate TA for 302 this semester. So the course website is a great resource that you all should probably go to every time you do 302 assignments. Uh, my sister-in-law is actually at Northwestern, and she also uses this website for her probability class. It's just that good. Um, so you Google, you Google uh, the professor's name, and then you go to the 302 website. So maybe even go to it now, and if you can't seem to find it before the end of the class, ask someone or ask us. This is the teaching staff PowerPoint webpage. We just heard from Dr. Chan. His office is in MSEE 338. And he's going to take office hours by appointment. He's slammed this semester. There's a lot of responsibilities that faculty have other than teach at Purdue. And so he's, uh, office hours are by appointment. But I will probably be your primary point of contact for all the ECE 302 related questions. My office hours will be Thursday, 2 to 3 p.m. We're going to meet in uh, EE 134 in person. Uh, that's negotiable to some extent. So if everyone hates that time, or they prefer an additional time, or they prefer a different time, we can chat. Uh, but that's how it stands right now. For virtual office hours, maybe people won't be able to come into the classroom at certain points in time. Uh, that's fine. So you can email me, and we can schedule a meeting. My uh, duty, which is um, very exciting, is that I will be handling all the grade appeals. So I know there's always like, ask the manager. You go to Walmart and you're upset. You're like, oh, I want to talk to the manager. That's Dr. Chan, obviously. But uh, largely for this class, this, this is going to be the responsibility of me. So um, just, just as a heads up, I guess maybe that's a bit different. Maybe you're thinking, oh, that's, that's unusual for what I've expected. So I want that to be clear now. We have two UTAs. We have Akshat and Pranav. They're both great. Um, Akshat was with us over the summer. He worked on some camera imaging projects, so he's pretty into that. And then um, Pranav plays chess. So that's a fun fact about Pranav. He's quite good. He's been playing since he was, how long have you played? Since he was like, 10 years. OK. So if you guys want to you know, compete, I'm sure he'd be up for it. So they're going to be grading the homeworks largely, and then answering Piazza questions. I'll also be grading some of the homeworks, but I'll largely be grading the exams. Um, and then they'll also be answering the Piazza questions online. So the lecture, Professor Chan is going to be handling the lecture most of the time. You're here in the right room at the right time, so you probably knew that. It's uh, You'll, there will be recordings, and we'll be getting them up pretty quickly. I think we just have to stitch them together. So there's going to be a recording of the screen, like when we switch it, and there'll be a recording of the person standing here. And we just have to stitch them together. So there'll be some delay in getting that uploaded because there's some delay with the video uploading to the website. And then we have to download it and mangle with the video stream. But it should not take, so we say 72 hours and 24 hours for these two things but hopefully it will be faster. And then there's a recitation option. Uh, it is optional. You do not have to go. But we'll go through different problems throughout the recitation. Depending on the quantity of students that attend that recitation, you might just answer your questions. So uh, if, if there's like a mass large number of you, then maybe we'll actually go through in some formal style. But largely, I'm thinking we'll probably just go through whatever burning questions you have that week. For the homework. That's going to be an EE222 right now, unless that room is weird for some reason. And unless there's some demand from you all to have a recording, there will be no recording of that. This is the grade distribution from fall 2022. So the homework is 30% to the grade with the worst one dropped. And then they had the two midterms with 15% each. And a final exam with a 40%. This is the grade distribution here. As you can see, uh, Dr. Chan pointed out just a moment ago uh, to us that you know we've, we've got these, these students over here. Um, I mean, unless you really don't care about the class, you probably won't end up over there. So, um, and, and so what happens is you get this 
you get all the grades over the semester and you see these shapes and then we put in cuts as to what the grade distribution is. Now, I feel instinctively when I was in your shoes, I'm thinking, oh, so we're competing against each other. That means I have to beat the person to the left of me. Um, and I guess maybe to some extent that's true. But I'm sure if everyone here got like a 90 or something, I feel like everyone could get an A still. So you're not actually competing against your neighbor. If you get a 100%, you're definitely going to get an A. So we're not unreasonable people. We were in your shoes once, too. So this is the textbook. It's on the website. So you can find it there. Uh, again, just go to the website. Pretty much all the resources are there. And then for the homework, everything's going to be handled on Gradescope. Probably everyone's used Gradescope before. And if you've not, you're free to come talk to us about that. There is no late homework that's accepted. Uh, and if you work with someone else, you have to state it in the homework. You should always write things in your own words. And we are serious about plagiarism. It's pretty easy to catch you if you are doing plagiarism. And Gradescope makes it just so easy to catch plagiarism. So just don't do it. You don't need to. Uh, homework hints. There's the course website. Again, there's homework, and then there's hints. There are actual videos going through the solution. So like, really, if you're just stuck, you know, go watch those videos. There's going to be one that's close to the homework problem. And you can go through that to get an idea of how to start. So these are the uh, midterms. This is like the scheduling stuff for the exams. So it looks like it's September 30th, uh, 2022, for exam one. And then November 4th, 2022. Uh, it'll be closed book, closed note, and no calculator. But you do get a formula sheet, and it is pretty impressive. So you probably won't need anything in addition to that. So even it, it might be even good practice as you do the homeworks. Just use the formula sheet sometimes when you're solving problems. And that should be more than enough. The final exam date, we don't know yet because that comes partially from Purdue. But don't travel because you know, we don't control when we schedule that event. Purdue tells us when we have it scheduled. And it's you know, fair game for them to schedule it on Saturday. So don't miss it because it's 40% of your grade. I don't know. It's such a shame. Uh, there's, again, same, same rules as before. Just use the formula sheet. So there's also DRC. So this is on the students who are using the DRC, which is accommodations for exams. You must submit your accommodation letter uh, through my Purdue. And you must submit an exam request at least one week before the exam. There are many students at Purdue. It's a small city. So they have to handle all of these requests. Please give them time. You have it today. I, I don't know if there's a rule on how early you could do it. but. This afternoon, you could go to DRC and get it all taken care of today. Um, and we, we can't handle late requests. It's just too challenging for us um, and the DRC to do that. So the contact, try to post as much as you can on Piazza. And it's great because then everyone can see it. And if you have a question, your neighbor probably does too. So I think it's a good thing to ask publicly. Um, yeah, everything, including homework, course logistics, deadlines, and discussion of exam problems, especially. Yeah, after the exam is done, ask as much as you want. It's good to get those correct. So even if you didn't get 100 when you took the exam, then you can get 100 after the exam, which is just as fun. Uh, you can contact me for great appeals, which is totally cool. Uh, I'm not going to be mad if you, I feel like sometimes I'm like, oh, are they going to be mad if I, if I give a great appeal because I didn't like how they graded it? It's fine, as long as you're not obnoxious. Like, I feel we're reasonable people again. So if you have a good reason to do a great appeal, then that's fine. Uh, exam arrangements for unanticipated events, like homeworks. Um, yeah, yeah. If it's really extenuating circumstances, then we can do something about that. But if it's like a job interview, that doesn't count. If it's like, I'm not feeling well, you know, give us something more than that. That also doesn't count. Lots of people don't feel well and they still go to work. So you can do your homework. Um, progress discussion. Uh, that's, I think, if you have some, some need to do some, I think you know who you are, and you'll come with me with paperwork if you need to. So if you have urgent, important, and private issues, Dr. Chan is here for you. Um, but uh, here on the PowerPoint, as it says, he's not going to override great decisions. So that's pretty, wow, pretty full power. But now you know. Fair game, right? You signed up for this class. You know the rules. So. 
you can't complain later. Or I guess you could, but at least you know. Okay, that's the end of the slides. Does anyone have questions over this section? Do people feel strongly? So just going back to this, do people feel like the office hour time at 2 to 3 p.m.? Uh, are there any strong feelings about that from you all? I saw some thumbs up and some shrugs, but I see no negative sentiment from the audience. Okay, great. Okay, I think that's it. And then do we dismiss Dr. Chan? So uh, we will be free today, and uh, we will uh, start doing the actual lecture contents um, starting on Wednesday. So you can go to the uh, uh, course website, you go to the lecture section, download those slides, you can print them out, and then we're going to start the actual technical content uh, starting on Wednesday. Okay, I'll be here to answer any questions. You'll feel free to come down and we can have a chat.